All right, Lion King, back with another bike review in my horde. It's not a Klein. My beautiful yard. Now, this is an early Ellsworth Truth. Sporting four inches of travel in the rear and what I believe to be a 120 mil fork. Now, I'm not exactly sure if it's a 100 or 120 mil Fox <sighs> float. Now, what is important about these bikes? This is a 90s Ellsworth here. So this could be a 96, 97 or a 98. Not exactly sure. Now, you know, the first thing that becomes immediately apparent with this bike would, you know, is just how small that head tube is and how low the front end is. And, you know, it's very difficult to ride one of these older bikes if you aren't willing to have your handlebars four inches below the seat, which was the way it used to be done. And that hurts my neck to crane your neck forward, you know, we're all gonna be just riddled with arthritis from, from those early days of low handlebars on mountain biking. So, you know, you can see what I've done here with this uh, kind of cheap $30 Chinese bar with just, you know, acres of rise, like four inches. You know, it's the only way I can ride it. So, it is what it is. I collect bikes that have relevance to the history of the sport, not in racing, but, you know, the development of the sport where they uh, changed riders' perceptions where bikes were so good that it forced people to reconsider what mountain biking was all about. And um, this was one of those, you know, these were hideously expensive in the 90s, like $2,500 for a frame. So we never had one, but it was considered a long travel bike that pedaled really efficiently. And it is, I rode this yesterday. I did 1300 feet of climbing and 10 miles on this in an hour and 45 minutes on the Pacific North Coast here. And you know, with tight, twisty, old school trails. It's awesome. Is this gonna keep up on any modern track or anything like that? No, of course not. The little wheels, you know, the little front end, it looks like, it's just the bike's too small under you. It makes you look like a bobblehead. Um, but it was under belt. It does not have bearings in the rear. Uh, you know, this link from Ellsworth was busted and I had to put some bronze machine bushings in there. This uh, stupid, uh, you know, rocker link got stripped and I had to put a through bolt. They made it too light. The seat tube snapped. Um, such, such it was because lightweight was considered above all else. And some of these survivors are rare. So I don't ride this much a few times a year. Got a little one by 10 set up on there in this uh, crazy vintage. I don't even know this Helix. It's not who makes this Stratos Helix spring and air. You know, that is uh, just a complicated mess, but you know, actually it feels pretty good. Rebuilt these Fox floats, you know, and there's nothing finer if you're gonna ride 26 inch. Um, and you're actually gonna ride it, you know, you're gonna be supremely disappointed with a Judy. And we really need to get the front end of these bikes up because we're not 17 years old anymore. And I guess if you had like a beautiful 100 mil, you know, Marzocchi uh, Z1 laying around or something like that, that would be, you know, pretty sweet too. I had a Judy, original Judy downhill on this, which, you know, matches, this color was painted to match the, you know, original Judy downhill with, uh, you know, three inches of travel, but is it, you know, it just underperforms and the front end is so low, you know, this bike would have come back in the day with flat bars and bar ends. Likely V brakes. So it had a disc tab on there. I am running discs, but 
You would have never seen that in the 90s. This would have had V brakes. So this fork is awesome. You need a true open bath fork that you can really ride. You know, I can hammer on this fork. They've got the bottomless travel. Feels like the travel's bottomless at 120 mil. They made a million of them. They're readily available for under $200. You can rebuild them for, you know, $30 and they're just good to go. Open bath. They don't have the uh, ridiculous, crazy Fox sealed damper mechanisms that they use on all the newer, bigger forks that, you know, are out of this world awesome when they're new, but just lead to just endless, you know, recalls and changes and complexity beyond your average home mechanic like myself. You just dump these Fox forks out and uh, put in new seals, and as long as the stanchions aren't rubbed raw from having no oil in them you know you're good to go can't complain about that so there there you go you know no dropper um i'm 45 this is what it's going to look like this is the bike i probably would have wanted when i was 19 i would have nutted up to have this and i think i got this frame for 20 bucks or something uh you are not going to be rebuilding the rear end anytime soon with these They've got these, you know, just little Delrin bushings in there. So you're not finding those again, you know. And so this just is what it is. You're not going to be putting tons of miles on these old things. You know, they're novelties. But what's cool about it is how well they ride for how old they are. Okay, thank you.